maybe maybe I'm not so crazy. <laughs> Tell me I'm not so crazy. Do you also have knitting and crochet goals that are like unnecessary but make you feel better because it makes you feel like you're accomplishing something? That's totally how I am like anyway, but especially right now, I just am looking for anything I can hold on to that gives me routine. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 59th episode of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, and it's a nice cool day here in North Texas. Surprisingly, our weather has been really warm, like in the 80s, and then it's been cooler the last few days which has been kind of nice, I'm not going to lie. Um, we've had our air conditioning on since February anyway, so it doesn't matter to us, but when it gets cold, we don't have to run the air, which is super, super great. So, yay for less interruptions with the audio. Um, but today I am super excited because it's my very first knitting and crochet podcast collaboration and this one is with Kay who is the crazy sock lady you've probably heard of her um, she lives in Arizona with her husband and her two boys and some dogs and some cats <laughs> and she is a knitting designer she is well known for her amazing sock patterns Right now she's doing a super fun like daily vlog, so definitely go check that out. Um, but Kay and I are going to be answering the same five questions. I'm gonna answer them later in the question segment of my podcast, but I will link her podcast, her latest episode, which just aired yesterday, um, down below. And also her, her channel link, I will link as well. Her channel, I will link as well. Um, so I'm really, really excited to start collaborating. And if you are coming over here from Kay's channel, hi, <laughs> welcome. I will have to tell you that I'm gonna be a little bit sillier this podcast for reasons I will explain in just a moment. But um, welcome to the Knitty Natty YouTube channel. I have a weekly knitting and crochet podcast, Love and Stitches. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also like to do tutorials and just like other fun videos. So welcome, I am so glad you're here. Thanks for coming over. Um, and if you are someone who watches me every week and you have not heard of Kay, the Crazy Sock Lady, um, make sure you click on those links and head over to her channel. I promise you will love her podcast. You will love her day in the life and vlog. Um, videos so head over there and see how she answers the questions that I'm gonna answer later in her video so first of all <laughs> I'm wearing pink today can you tell I have decided since being home that I'm gonna try like I don't know maybe you're feeling this way too like I want to get ready sometime <laughs> sometimes like I the first, like, I've, I've been home for, I think, five weeks now, like, not going into work, working from home. And I've been wearing, like, leggings and shirts. Like, I've been getting up and getting ready every day. Every morning, I've set an alarm. That hasn't been a problem to, like, start that routine. But I haven't been wearing, like, real pants. Like, I've been wearing leggings and t-shirts. And so, starting yesterday, I was like, all right, I'm going to wear jeans which is like super comfortable still, but it makes me feel more put together. And I decided I would grab, I have so many lipsticks for someone who doesn't have a lot of makeup. Like I only wear foundation, primer foundation and mascara. I have a lot of lipstick. So I decided to go with some gloss today. It's super, super pink. Um, and it's looking very pink in the camera, although in person it, it didn't look that pink. So um, I was surprised <laughs> when I looked in the camera, but I love pink, so. I like it, um, but yeah, I know for a fact that when I go back and edit this and when you're watching it, I'm gonna say a lot of strange things because not like strange, like the subject of it's gonna be strange, but like I'm gonna mean to say one word and say the other. I just know that I am because I got up at 6.30 this morning, which is when I've been waking up, and 
got ready, sat down at my desk at seven and I have been going since seven and it's like three, almost three o'clock now, like nonstop doing stuff with a screen. So whew, I am like a little all over the place, but I was ready to podcast. I'm excited to podcast and I have learned a lesson because the reason I've been going since this morning is because I procrastinated and waited till yesterday to record a video that went out on Tuesday today. And so I was editing it this morning and uh, yeah, I learned not to do that. No recording and then editing the next day, that's too much. That's why I record on Tuesdays, edit on Wednesdays and put my podcast out on Thursdays. It's better for me, it's better for you guys because then I'm not as insane. Um, but I did decide that I needed a little pick-me-up to drink. Um, I'm not wearing any knitting today. It is cooler outside, like 60 degrees, um, but I just didn't put on any knitting today. But my drink is wearing some knitting. So this is actually one of my patterns. This is the classic can cozy. It's so easy. You can use leftover fingering weight yarn from socks or a sweater. Um, starts at the bottom, it's knit in the round, and ends with this I-cord, this stretchy I-cord bind off, which I have a tutorial um, on my channel for. So I'm gonna be drinking like the Texas transfer that I am. There we go, Dr. Pepper. Because I need a little energy, and then after this, I'm going to rest because literally my heart is beating so fast. I've just been going all day. <laughs> so, should make for interesting content. And I will try not to get hiccups because a lot of times when I drink something carbonated, because I don't drink soda very often, I get hiccups <laughs> when I drink it. So here we go. If you're new here, welcome. Sometimes I'm a little bit silly, but let's talk about knitting and crochet, shall we? I have a finished object this week. I just finished it last night and this is a crocheted piece. I was testing it for um, Stephanie Aaron by Stephanie Aaron. Oh, I just dropped my yarn. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get that in a second. Um, but. I finished it last night. I still have a couple ends to weave in and I need to wash and block it. Um, but other than that, it is totally, totally done. So let me see if I can scoot back here a little bit. This is not out yet, but this is the Soundwave shawl. It is a crocheted shawl um, by Stephanie Aaron, who's by Stephanie Aaron on Instagram. It is just so much fun to crochet. It's really fast, it uses two skeins of fingering weight yarn and one skein of mohair. I actually had quite a bit of mohair left and then I'm gonna grab the fingering weight in just a second and I'll show you uh, what the yarns are called. Um, but it's all pretty much one stitch. Like it's really easy to memorize even for me, like a crocheter or a capital K knitter that like kinda knows how to crochet. I mean, I know how to crochet, but following crochet is a lot harder than, for me than knitting and I was able to follow it really, really easily. So highly recommend this pattern. I still have my marker, my cute little peach marker in here. Um, that's where I was last week. So as you can see, I kind of went crazy. I wanted to get this finished so that I didn't have to worry about meeting the deadline. And now I just need to wash and block and take photos of it. So hopefully I can convince my husband to take some photos of me here soon. But let me grab that yarn and I'll tell you what the colorways are. Okay, so I used two different dyers and I did take a little clip for you just to kind of show you, um, even though it's sort of a, a, like a zigzag shape, it does wrap around your neck really well, just that like classic shawl wrap where the shawl part's in the front and then you wrap the two ends around, so it's perfect. I also know when I block this, it's gonna get even bigger, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but I used two different dyers, so for the fingering weight, I used a single ply, and good thing and bad thing, this used up literally all of the yarn. This is all that I have left. I still need to weigh it, but I'm thinking that I probably have maybe two grams left. So that's great because it uses up all my yarn, but it's tricky because you have to be really careful not to go over the gauge or you will run out, <laughs> which wouldn't be that hard to adjust. Um, but this is Suburban Stitcher and the colorway is Peach Tea and it took two skeins of that. I used the single sock base because I'm just really into single ply right now. I absolutely love single ply. And then for the mohair, I did have a lot left. I haven't weighed this one either, but I would guess that I have probably half of my mohair still. 
and this is Chasing Rabbits Fiber Company in Campari Ice. So the fun thing about this shawl is that it's two different dyers, but they're both Texas dyers. So it's kind of like my local Texas shawl. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Stephanie's version and a lot of the other testers is very contrasting. So the mohair is a way different color than the fingering weight. And I like this enough that I would definitely consider making another one and doing the contrasting yarns. I have this purple mohair. Um, I can't remember the dyer right now, but it's bright purple and I would love to make another one and uh, do like something light for the fingering weight. I think that would be so, so much fun. So this pattern is going to be coming out, I think in May but definitely follow by Stephanie Aaron, and I'll be posting about it too when it comes out. I have made a video all throughout the testing process of this shawl, so that will be coming out on the release date too. So stay tuned for that. It is all coming very soon. I have put a lot of work into my neglected Golden Willow shawl. Um, so last week it was totally neglected, but this week it was not. I made sure like I was setting goals this weekend for how many rows I was gonna do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday so that I was done with the middle section. So this is Golden Willow by Leslie Ann Robinson. And it's got, it's all brioche, textural brioche, and then just, I don't know, regular, <laughs> regular brioche in the center. It's got three um, little, I guess, sections in the center panel. And I'm finding dog hair. Ooh. Um, and I was kind of part of the way through this last center section last week right there and so I really wanted to be finished with that whole center section because once I'm done with that basically it's a repeat of this side except in reverse order and different colors so lots of stuff to keep your interest but I'm going to start decreasing so I just did one decrease row i barely started it but i should now that my sound wave shawl is done be able to kind of make this a priority because i want to finish this and one other project by the end of april and it's what the 14th so we're about halfway through april which is just perfect so that is all done that middle section and it looks really pretty on the other side here too i love brioche for its reversibility so so cool this, is, this has been so much fun to knit. Um, Leslie Ann Robinson, she is Knit Graffiti on Instagram, and I think her design, like her designs are also under the name Knit Graffiti. And if you like to do brioche, or even if you don't, like if you like knitting shawls and garments, you have to go check out her patterns because every time I post this one, somebody will say, oh, I'm making like one of her other designs and I love it and it's so much fun. And I got to take a class from her, um, actually two classes at the Knitting in the Hills retreat in Austin, Texas, just a few weeks ago. And well, more than a few weeks ago, um, but right at the beginning of March. And it was so great. Like she just has so many good patterns. She's so creative. So definitely go check her out if you are yearning for something really fun and interesting to make. She also includes video tutorials um so if you don't know how to do a certain brioche stitch it's likely in her pattern i know it is for this one so that helped a lot because um even though i did all these different stitches in her class and then right here when i got to this side i had forgotten how to do it so i went to her video tutorial and just you know saw it once and it got me right back so for this i'm using three different colors and three different dyers. You can see that I am almost out of my main. Well, I think it's kind of the main color, the one that's the most visible on the front, but I didn't have a full skein of that. But that one is, let me find all my labels here, Hooker's Corner, and the color is Lover's Lane. That is the first one. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I'm back and more organized. This color right here is Malabrigo Machita, and that color is Renaissance. And then the purple, the final color, ooh, I really want to finish this now. It's going to be so much faster now that it's decreasing. Whoa. Calm down, Natalie. <laughs> this one is Dream in Color Jilly, 
and the colorway is lavender bloom. So I have been working through some single ply yarn here between the um, Soundwave shawl that I just finished crocheting and this shawl, and then I've got another scarf that I'm about to show next that's also in single ply. I have almost completely depleted my single ply like square in my Ikea shelf. And so just with like, I don't know if it's because of being home and looking for like something to feel accomplished. Now I'm like, ooh, I really wanna work through all my single ply and just have no single ply anymore and just have an empty shelf and I can rearrange things. Maybe, maybe I'm not so crazy. <laughs> Tell me I'm not so crazy. Do you also have knitting and crochet goals that are like unnecessary but make you feel better because it makes you feel like you're accomplishing something? That's totally how I am like anyway, but especially right now, I just am looking for anything I can hold on to that gives me routine. Okay, <laughs> one more, uh, I have two more whips, but one of them I did not work on, but I will, I'll just show it to you real quick because I should be able to work on it this week. Um, but here is my, another knitting project in single ply. <laughs> this is my Traveler's Loop. This is a pattern by Dawn Barker. It is super, super, super easy, and it is to practice the technique helical knitting, which just means you're knitting with two or more colors or two or more balls, balls of yarn, and instead of carrying and like twisting the yarns when they meet at the beginning of the round, you kind of do this thing where it shifts throughout the exchange point, I guess, shifts throughout the round or throughout the project in different spots in the round and you basically slip three stitches. Like that's how easy it is. I've got a tutorial on helical knitting and right now um, I'm also hosting a knit along. I really need to get better about promoting that. This is gonna be a priority now that my test is done. I am going to be working on this nightly. I think I need to plan out a schedule because I believe I'm halfway done right now for the width of this. This is gonna be a very squishy double loop scarf. I think it's gonna be one that I wear a whole lot, um, but I definitely need to make it a priority if I'm gonna finish by the end of April. To participate in the Gila Cow, you can see hashtag Gila Cow right there. Um, all the details will be down below. I've got a thread in the Ravelry group, the Love and Stitches Ravelry group, and I've also got a blog post about it, so you can read about it in either of those places, and you can also participate on Instagram by using the hashtag but it's really casual. You don't have to um, finish your helical project by April 30th. <laughs> um, you just have to like work on it and either post in the Ravelry group or post on Instagram. And I'm gonna be drawing two winners. Um, Dawn, who designed this pattern, she's also chasing rabbits fiber, which I was using. Um, th this is her mohair, chasing rabbits. But she is donating two prizes of two skeins of yarn to be given away. So one of those will be given away on Instagram for using the hashtag HelaCal in your feed. And then the other one will be given away on Ravelry for posting in the Ravelry group in the HelaCal thread. So if you're participating, make sure you get over there. It's not too late to join because if you have a whip already going with helical knitting or if you start something new, you don't even have to finish it. Just get in there and show us what you're working on. Okay. Let me tell you about these two yarns because I did get some help <laughs> in identifying one of them. So this one is another Malabrigo Machita, and this one is in the colorway Water Green, which I really, really love. This I think was a gift. Like I didn't know, it was either a gift or it was in a swag bag because I never would have picked this color out um, on my own. It's pretty like cool and bright for my taste, but paired with this one, which, I can't remember your name right now, but somebody last week helped me confirm that this, and now I'm forgetting the color, it's Ching Fiber, and I think it's like Blue Finch. It's from their Bedrock collection, but it's got just the tiniest hints of blue, mostly kind of like tan, and at first I wasn't sure when I paired them up if it was gonna work, but I think it's turning out really, really pretty. So. I love it, I love it. But so easy, just knitting and purling garter stitch. It's the best TV and movie project ever because you only have to look down when you get to those helical stitches and that doesn't take long at all. 
the rows are nice and long. So, yep, I need to divide up, let's see, real quick. If I have, say, 60 rounds remaining and 16 days, what's that? Can you do that math for me? <laughs> okay, let's make it easier. Let's say I have 15 days remaining and 60 rounds. That would be four, right? Four times 15 is 60. So if I did four, just four rounds a day, I could finish. I think I can do more than four rounds a day. So that needs to be my goal. Four rounds a day, two garter ridges a day, and I can finish in time. Okay, that made me feel better if I did that math right, which there is no guarantee. Okay, I have two more things to talk about knitting and crochet wise. Um, real quickly, I'm just going to show you my blur shawl because if you watched last week, it hasn't grown. Actually, it hasn't grown in two weeks because I was working on a different crocheted shawl. So this is blur by, um, it's Addie Day Designs and her name is Deanne Ramsey. Yeah, Deanne Ramsey. And so this is just another great example of modern crochet, I just love it. Fingering weight yarn, I've got five colors here. Three of them are in this piece right now. I just started on the third color. So I'm really excited to start working on this one again, just because I had so many projects going. Like for me, five projects is a lot of projects. I usually keep it around three projects. So I really wanted to focus on that test and then now I can come back to this one and my other projects. So just real quick showing you that but I hope to show you actual progress on it next week. Um, and then I have something else to show you. I have an unknit. So this week I decided, well, I didn't decide it this week, but I decided to carry through on it this week. So I made a sweater last year, I crocheted it, and it just, it didn't fit me. I tried undoing half of it and redoing it, and I should have just taken the whole thing out and redone it. I, honestly, I should have just fixed it when I first realized it, but I think that happens to all of us is we just, we can't learn our lesson. We just have to keep praying that it will, will block out or it will somehow change. But we know that that doesn't happen. So I decided to go ahead and frog this project. And so I have an unknit. <laughs> I will put a little clip in of me frogging this sweater, but here I have the balls of yarn remaining from the sweater. I don't think I can hold all of them on the screen because there are lots. There's some tiny ones as well. But now I have all this beautiful reclaim, reclaimed yarn to um, start a new project, which I'm not gonna be starting right away. Um, but I do have an idea to make a cardigan. Um, a Hohi Locatelli pattern, so I'm excited to have done that. And I do count that as part of my craft time because it took me like three hours to frog it. I was making a video at the same time, but still, it took a long time, so it ate into my knitting time. And so of course, I gotta show you, it's yarn related. So I feel pretty good about all that was accomplished in the past week and I am already ready to do some more knitting tonight. Okay, now we're going to move into some questions and I'm gonna be answering mostly questions that Kay and I are answering together, but I am gonna take one question from the Ravelry group. So if you have questions for me, head to the Ravelry group, Love and Stitches, and go to the Ask Me thread. I'll still try to throw in a question or two from there um, as I do this podcast collaboration series. So don't forget that Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, she is answering these same five questions on her podcast this week, which is linked down below. So don't forget to go over there and um, listen to her answers to these questions. Give her video a like, subscribe to her. I know that you're really going to like her. Um, she's so awesome. And um, comment on her video too, to let her know if you came from, if you heard about her from me, she would love to hear that. Um, so let's get into these questions. These questions came from you guys over on Instagram. So if you wanna be part of asking these types of questions for my guests in the future, <laughs> um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Nitty Natty, and I will put up in my stories a little box and you can put questions in there that you would like for me and for another podcaster to answer. And we're gonna do them in the same week as best as we can. Um, 
and it's gonna be really fun. I get to introduce you to some podcasters that maybe you've never heard of before, and I also get to help you find out more about those that you love already. So let's get started. The first question this week is, what made you decide to start a podcast? This question actually got asked multiple times, um, so I will answer that here, and don't forget Kay is answering that on her channel. Um, so, <laughs> My journey to start a podcast, it didn't start out with the podcast in mind. I first started with an Instagram, I think it was in 2017, in the fall sometime, 2017. I started with my Instagram and I really wanted it to be just a place where I could do social media without like really engaging with anybody. I just kind of wanted to post, but like be anonymous. So I didn't put my picture, I didn't put my name. I didn't want anyone that I knew in real life to find me on there. And through the powers of social media, I don't know, people still found me even though I didn't have my, I don't even think I had Natalie on there. I think it was just nitty natty and no photos of me and people still found me. I don't know how that happened, but I did change, you know, what I wanted to do and I decided that I was going to start a blog. And so when I started my blog or just a little bit before I decided to put a lot more into Instagram and so I, I did, I put my name and I put my face on there and I started really taking care of taking quality pictures and then I started my blog and it was so fun. I got to, you know, Ravelry was a great place to post my projects but it didn't get a lot of interaction. and so. A blog was a great place where I had like endless places, to, er, endless space to talk about it. And I did my blog for, ooh, like I think I started in March of 2018 and then I didn't start my YouTube channel until December of 2018. So what is that, like eight or nine months? Math is hard. <laughs> um, for a while before I even started my YouTube channel. and. Eventually, like the blog was just not enough for me to express how much I loved knitting and crochet. I, it just wasn't enough space. I needed more, I needed multimedia. And so I started out with Vlogmas. So my very first YouTube video was December 1st, Vlogmas 2018. You can still go watch all of Vlogmas 2018. I also did it last year in 2019. And it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really fun over the years to see um, like for me personally, just to see like what was going on in our lives during those December months. Um, but that's how I started with, with Vlogmas. And then I think I, I did have the idea that I wanted to do a podcast. And so I started, um, my very next video was in January of 2019 and I did a year in review inspired by one of my favorite audio podcasters, um, who is Boston Jen, she is so awesome. And she always does a year in review, talks about her projects, how many knit versus how many crochet. And so I just did that in video form and um, I plan to start my like podcast episode one. Oh, you know, I'm missing something. I did start with IGTV. So when I felt the need to get on video, I started my IGTV channel right around when IGTV came out. Um, and I just did, I only could do 10 minutes. And those 10 minute clips, like they were not really easy to edit and everything. So I just did really fast Whip Wednesdays. And I have a lot of those. If you wanna go back, that's really where I started with video. Um, and then I decided to start my YouTube channel in December because I wanted more time to talk and I wanted this format so that's really how I got into video. I almost glossed over those like 20 or 30 episodes that I have on IGTV. Um, but when I did start my YouTube channel, it was just an incredible, like people were so supportive and that really did um, help me like know that I was doing something that people were interested in and that really um, helped me go along. I cannot forget after my very first like year in review, and I think it was between my year in review and episode one, um, Diane, who is a Suburban Stitcher, she's got the Suburban Stitcher podcast, she had seen the episode and she talked about me and I woke up, like I went to sleep and one day and I woke up and I looked at my phone and I had like hundreds of notifications from people subscribing to my channel and I thought I had gotten hacked. <laughs> 
and I was like something is wrong because I had you know gone through all of vlogmas with like you know every day I'd get like one or you know every week I get like a few subscribers and overnight I had hundreds I was like something is wrong <laughs> and it was Diane talking about me on her podcast and um, that really helped launch what is the Nitty Natty YouTube channel today so I cannot thank Diane enough just for just for talking about me it made all the difference in the world and she is awesome we've collaborated since then on a yarn and pattern so that's kind of how I got started that's kind of what boosted me and so I'm excited to do this collaboration with people um, and just hopefully like I don't have the impact that Diane has or like the reach but I'm hoping to do that for um, some other YouTubers that maybe you haven't seen before so I'm really really excited about that part okay second question what is your favorite thing to comfort knit I just have to say socks I know I don't have a pair of socks going right now but socks are like the ultimate simple knit for me because I have made so many pairs of socks nowhere near as many as K <laughs> I know that but I have made so many socks over the years um, if I am about to like go on a trip and I don't have a project that's good for travel, I will cast on a pair of socks or just even get the yarn and the um, needles ready. And I can cast on like on a plane, on a train, anywhere, <laughs> like green eggs and ham or whatever that is. Um, I can cast on socks anywhere. Like they're just, it's in my head, the pattern that I always use and I can, once I get going, I can pretty much knit on them without looking, except for like the heel and the increases and decreases and ribbing and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely comfort knitting for me. You probably won't ever see me knitting on socks at home unless I'm trying to finish a pair because they're not interesting enough. Like I want home time to be on the more complicated projects, but socks are always my on the go knitting. I love them. Okay, question number three. What is one knitting or crochet skill you want to become better at? Um, so kind of segueing, I would love to learn to make crocheted socks. I know crocheted socks are not exactly, you know, the same as knitted socks, which are not exactly the same as machine store-bought socks. Their function is different and that's okay. Um, but I would like to learn how to make crocheted socks because I think they'd be great to wear at home. Plus I just want to like have that skill and know how to do it. I think it will increase my um, like crochet skills in general, just to learn how to make socks. Um, so that's kind of something, sorry, that is on my list during this time is to find a good crochet sock pattern. I actually got recommended um, one from a friend last week that I'm gonna check out and see um, how that will work for me. But hopefully soon I can make some crocheted socks because the other reason I wanna do that is in the summertime, I'm going to be hosting the second annual um, sock week, and I want people who are crocheters to participate too and crochet socks. And so I feel like I need to lead by example and, and crochet a pair of socks, at least one before then. So that's on my list. I've said it now, now I have to do it. <laughs> okay, and question number four. What is your favorite knitting tool? That is hard. I think my favorite tool, and it's really not a tool, like a, a physical tool, but I think my favorite thing is yarn cozies. So I have so many different ones. Let me see. I have some, yeah, perfect. So I have this one here. This is a like jersey material one I got at from Erin Lane Bags last year at DFW Fiberfest. As you can see, I'm pulling, a, this is, was a cake of yarn, doesn't look like one anymore, but I'm pulling from the middle and this will hold on to this yarn until it is almost gone. It keeps it from becoming a tangled mess when it's in the project bag. I also have ones that are in my float totes. They're just like the crocheted ones that are part of my float tote pattern. And these work really, really well too. Um, they don't quite have like the cling to them, but they still will keep your yarn organized for almost until the end. Um, the other ones, I just yesterday put out a tester call for these. So this is gonna be one of my patterns. It's the Yarn Cozy Light. Um, I'm gonna talk about this more in a little bit, but it's just like, you can use leftover sock yarn, it's fingering weight, um, and this holds on to your yarn until almost the very end too. This is a skein or a cake of DK, 
And when I was making my sound wave shawl, I used these two. I've got just a plain one that needs the ends woven in. You don't have to weave in your ends for them, these to work. <laughs> and then cute little cable-like one. And they really did hold my yarn. Like this little bit of yarn was still in one of these until the very end. So I think a yarn cozy, whether you knit one, buy one, cut an old soccer sock, those work really well. If you need to like a, like a long skein of yarn, you can use like one of your kids' soccer socks and just cut, well, you know what that they're not using anymore and just cut the leg part off and it works great pantyhose i've seen it all <laughs> but i think a yarn cozy is just if you're using a caked yarn indispensable absolutely that's my favorite accessory okay last question number five how long did it take you to get into the groove with knitting and the person who asked this kind of said like knitting kind of when you're like like not having to focus so much on it. Like you can knit while you're watching TV or knit um, without looking or knitting in the dark, etc. So it's hard to remember because I did start knitting. I learned to knit when I was 13, but I would say that I really got into knitting when I was 16 and I've been knitting. Mm, that makes it what? Like 15? years I think I've been knitting for 15 years um, but I would say I really took off like in high school and college um, and then picked or stopped I'm sorry picked <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen who even knows what I've been saying have I been speaking English <laughs> um, but I I knit a lot in high school um, my junior and senior years I worked at a yarn store and that really like ramped up my skills a lot especially when I had to help people fix mistakes um, and then took off a lot of time in college. I really didn't knit much except when I came home in the summer. And then after college, I got back into it. And that's, you know, current day. <laughs> Haven't stopped. Um, but so I can't, it's hard to say how long. Like, I don't know if it's really a number of years, but more like the amount of time you put into it. And when you hang out with other knitters and crocheters, you, you do it more and you have to socialize. You know, you might be socializing while you're knitting or crocheting, which in turn improves your skills so I don't know I wouldn't feel like it would be unreasonable for it to take several months to feel comfortable like being able to work on something simple like maybe just knitting no change in your stitch count and sit and have a conversation it, I wouldn't be surprised if that took several months and I think that's okay um, because it is it's like you're teaching your brain to do two things at once like just to make you feel better the other day I was taking a walk with my dog and I was chewing gum and I'm just walking and chewing gum and like also looking at my phone let's I'm not gonna lie and the next thing I know my gum has just dropped out of my mouth it have hit my shirt hit my leg and fell on the ground <laughs> So I can't even walk and chew gum, like, come on. So don't feel bad if it takes several months to get into the groove with knitting, um, just being able to hold a conversation while you're doing it. And then as far as like not having to look, I think that takes many, many years because for me, like my body just like is, my muscles have that muscle memory and I can just, knit I can feel it I can feel when I make a mistake and then of course I look at my knitting when I make a mistake I'm not like not looking at knitting at all but I can do you know go for a stretch of stitches or a stretch of rows without having to look down if it's something very simple <laughs> like my traveler's loop which is the garter stitch infinity scarf so it takes time it really does and I mean knitting is it doesn't have to be like a like that doesn't have to be a skill that you have, or especially not right away. Like it's okay, it's a craft. I mean, other crafts you have to be fully engaged in and look at, so it's okay if that doesn't happen right away. But I would give yourself a few months to get into the groove and a few years to knit without looking. So head over to Kay's um, podcast to see how she answered those questions. I can't wait to see if our answers are similar or different. And I should have somebody, um, 
every week for the next while answering different questions. So please um, watch out on my Instagram stories so that you can have uh, or add your questions to there if you have something interesting to ask us. And I'm gonna answer one more question and then we'll go into something else. So this is from the Ravelry group. This is um, from Fuller930. And th oh, I didn't see your name. Let me see if your name is on your profile. Nope, okay. So Fuller930 says, hey Natalie, I'm still learning to knit as noted in the previous question. So this is another new knitter question but one I feel is missed often in videos and tutorials. That being said, my question is this, how do you go back several rows when you've messed up and can't just go back a stitch or two? I was making a pair of socks, ambitious, I know, that is ambitious, good job, I love it. And I messed up on my heel. I mess up on my heels all the time, <laughs> all the time. Um, I wanted to frog back a few rows and start again, but I couldn't find a single video showing how to actually do that. I've heard you say that you've had to pull back a few rows before and was wondering if you could help me and other new knitters out. I really appreciate it and can't wait to hear how you go back when you have to, thanks. Oh man, we can all relate to that, I think. So um, of course that's something that I like can't show you right here, but I'm gonna try to tell you two ways that I frog. So I actually do have a video tutorial for one of those ways. Um, so one way that you can frog back a few rows is to carefully slide your needles out, don't undo your knitting, look through your knitting and find a row where you know your knitting is correct, and then you will take your needles and you will go into those stitches before you even take out any knitting and pick up that entire round or row. I have a video on this. I'll try to remember to link it and put a card in for you guys. Um, but I have it shown on something that is flat in stockinette. So for a sock, you would it would look the same, except you just need to go all the way around. Basically, you pick up the right leg of every stitch in a row. You might not get the same row, but it's definitely okay. It gets you really close. So that's one way is you can go ahead and take those needles out, pick up the row you wanna go back to, and then after that, you unravel that knitting that has the mistake in it. Um, the other way that I do more often is I will, again, take my needles out. I will pull out the rows, like no, no needles in there. I will pull out the rows until I'm one row before, like. I'm basically I'm at the row where the mistake is or one row from a good clean like easy row to pick up and then one by one I will pull out a stitch stick my needle in pull out the second stitch stick that needle in so one stitch at a time I'm getting my stitches back onto the needle from basically something that is free of needles so I hope that makes sense I don't have a video on that second method um, but that is something that I would be happy to show. I've been thinking that I need to do more like quick tutorials, um, which I might start doing on IGTV. So if I make a mistake <laughs> where I have to do that, maybe I will really quickly record that one day. So be looking out on Instagram and also on YouTube for that, but um, check out that video on the first method that I was talking about. And then if you guys have any tips for Fuller930, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, um, go into the Ravelry thread or comment on this video and let us know how you handle ripping out several rows at a time. Basically, the easiest thing is to take out your needles, go back to the row that's good and get it back on the needles. Everyone does it a little bit differently. If you have questions on the Ravelry thread, I will be coming back to them, trying to answer one or two every week. Okay, quick little drink and then we'll head into some news. Okay, so I have a new video that just came out today, the one that <laughs> I procrastinated on. I don't know if I said that. I procrastinated on it, so I had to edit it this morning, which I didn't have to. I could have had the video come out another day, but I know when I get behind on my self-imposed schedule, it totally messes me up, which is why I said, got a podcast today, can't wait till tomorrow, because then I'll have to record and edit in the same day. It is very important to me that I get my podcast up on the same day every week, because 
you guys are expecting it. I have podcasters that I watch every Thursday as well. <laughs> it's important. Okay. Anyway, that video is called, uh, I think it's called like Unravel, Unravel a Sweater with Me and Chat, Unravel a Sweater and Chat with Me, something like that. But basically I show me taking this sweater out, took me a long time. Don't worry, it's not a three hour video. But along the way, I answer some questions that I had gotten um, a few weeks back for a Zoom video that I did. And so I decided to, you know, make it more interesting by showing you the process that I, how I frog things, plus doing a Q&A. So that's a fun video. It is an hour long. So it's a good one to like throw on in the background while you're folding some laundry or making dinner or frogging a project of your own um, because it's just chatter and some satisfying pulling back stitches and all of that. So you'll get to see literally me wearing the sweater to me frogging or having just yarn, frogging it completely. So it definitely motivated me to get that done. So that was really, it was fun to do. Frustrating, but fun. <laughs> um, speaking of live videos. I am planning to have another live video this weekend. This time it is the morning's turn because last two weekends ago I did an evening Zoom kind of knit night. And so now I'm going to do a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. I have not decided yet if I'm going to do a Zoom or if I'm going to do a YouTube live. Um, I just need to think about that for another day, but I'll definitely let you know on Instagram. You can find all the information over there and I will let you guys know what I plan on doing. But yeah, come and hang out with me on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. either on YouTube or on Zoom and bring your knitting, bring your crochet. I'll put questions out on Instagram that you can ask me so that I have something to talk about. If not, I will invent something. Um, usually we hang out anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and it's just a lot of fun to like virtually slash pretty much live talk to other knitters and crocheters. Um, so I, it's a lot of fun. We've had um, anywhere from like 40, 50, 60 people on those YouTube lives and Zoom. So there is always a great group of people there. And then I also have finally for the, the first of the year put out, I'm sorry, my first of the year and it's April 14th. I have put out a new pattern to test and that is this, the Yarn Cozy Light. Um, so this is one version of it. It's going to be one pattern with three different versions. So you can see you got the plain ribbed version. I've got the, this is actually faux cables. They're so easy to do. And then this one, it's the same ribbing, but there are a lot of tips on how to change colors. Um, even though this is self striping, but like going from one color to the next without getting that color change to show. So I put out the call yesterday and I did plan to keep it open, um, for a few days, but it actually got, I actually got so many applicants in the first day for the first time saying first a lot. I had to close the tester application early. Um, so I am so, so sorry if that means that you missed out on applying to test. I just had to at some point like stop it because I do look through every single person that applies. Um, and right now I have 107 persons <laughs> to look through, which I am kind of just humbled that so many of you want to make this pattern and are willing to test for me, which is just incredible. I mean, that means you're excited about the pattern. So yay. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're excited. Um, but I can't have, I couldn't possibly, I don't think look through more applications than that. I really genuinely am so, so sorry. I, um, I'm going to add, I'm planning to add to my tester application, um, a question where you can say like, that you've applied to one of my tests before and haven't gotten in because what I want to do is like I choosing testers is hard. Like I could just have a group of testers, which I've done in the past, but I actually like having it open so that I can get new people in. Um, and that's just an experiment for me. I have to figure out what's going to work. Um, but what I don't want to do is 
never get to those new people because my same people are applying to tests and like of course I want them to come back right um, so I want to put in there a spot where you can kind of say like I've applied to tests before but haven't gotten it so I know to be looking out for you like hey this person has come back two times like they're great they want to test like this is their time and that kind of also helps me tell people who have gotten to test a lot of my patterns like like I love you so much <laughs> but it's time to give some other people a chance. So know that that is coming. I'm trying to figure out the right balance between all of that. It's tricky. I would lo I love to include people. Um, I don't know if you can hear Toaster, he's growling. Um, but yeah, so I'm, again, genuinely so sorry that that got full so fast, um, but I did have to do that just for my own sake <laughs> so that I could look through all those applicants. But if you are really excited about this particular concept, I am going to have um, more versions. I'm planning a worsted weight version that's knitted, and I'm also planning a crocheted version. I just don't know which one I'm going to do first. Hmm. I don't know. I need to get to work on that here soon because I think now that I have the general concept that I will be able to come up with those other ones pretty quickly. So. If you don't get to test this one, please, please, please come back. It does not mean that you are not suited to test, I promise. Okay, um, let's talk about life. I have another announcement. Ah, I'm so excited. So last week I kind of hinted that something big was coming and I have finally announced it. I have a new YouTube channel. This one is completely different. It's not knitting and crochet. Um, but if you are familiar with my passions, if you like follow me on Instagram and see me post about cleaning and organizing routines, you'll know that this is just a long time coming. So I have started a new channel. It's called This and Nat, which I thought was a really cute name um, just to include. It's going to be a life, it's a lifestyle channel, but it's mostly about organizing routines and cleaning um, so I get to share all of my tips and all of the things that I like to do to help me stay on top of things um, and it's just something that I've loved since I was like a kid like I would organize my room I would label stuff I would make schedules I just have I honestly have always been the way that I am <laughs> like that's just who I am. But I don't think that um, being organized is something that you're just like, you just either are good or bad at. Like you can, you can learn to obtain those skills and everybody is different. No one is the same in how they organize, how they schedule, and there is no right way. That's what I have been learning. So I'm excited to share that channel with you guys. And to, if you're interested, head over there i have just put up an intro video um, so you can kind of see what's coming and then on april 25th which is just about two weeks i am going to start with a premiere and it's going to be my weekly cleaning routine which has been asked people have asked me to share what do i do weekly because i've got toilet tuesday i've got sheet sunday what happens in between there and i'm going to be sharing all of that in my weekly cleaning routine video and if you want to come hang out it's going to premiere at 10 a.m on april 25th on the this and that channel um so you can come hang out for that and then i'm going to have lots of content for the first month i'm going to have about I, i'm planning to do three videos a week for the first month just to kind of get that channel up and rolling um so i would really appreciate it if you are interested in that type of content if you would head over there and subscribe to that channel so that you're ready um, for when those videos come if you're not interested in that type of content 100 percent understand hang around for the knitting here i totally totally get it no pressure at all um, but if you're like, wait, what's, what are cleaning videos? Why would I want to watch those? Um, there are some people that you can go watch right now to see if you're interested. I absolutely love Bits of Brie. She's Brianna K on YouTube. And then I'll link her below. And then I also really like Love Meg. Um, and they are like huge YouTube moms. And so that's not really, I'm not a mom. That's not the genre that I'm in. But I do love um, cleaning 
an organizational video. So all of that to say, I have a new channel that I'm really, really, really excited about. Um, and then if you um, also want to follow, if, you, if you're not really interested in cleaning, but you are interested um, in just more of like the behind the scenes of like my life and stuff, that sounds kind of weird to say, but I have started another Instagram account to go with the channel. It's at all of this and that, and I'm gonna be sharing not just the cleaning stuff, but also a more personal side of things like Knitting Natty is for knitting and crochet. In my stories, I do share my personal life, but on all of this and that, I'll be sharing even more. So if you're interested, head over there. I shared some stuff about my husband today, which was really fun. I think he's a little bit excited about this account too, because he gets to like contribute and be a part. So. So excited, oh, it's, it's, I'm really, really pumped to actually get those um, cleaning videos up. I've been recording them and working on them for several months, so, so excited. Um, also, life uh, this past weekend was Easter. My mother-in-law is living with us right now and she is like the queen of, I don't even know, um, she always makes things special. She just really knows how to do that. Um, so I hope to learn some things from her because growing up in my family, we really didn't make things special. Like birthdays were just like, they were kind of special, but they were just other days. And it wasn't like a, in a negative way. It's just, it didn't matter as much. Like that's just the way I grew up. Like it wasn't a huge thing. Like also I think it's part, part, partly me being the oldest and being nine years older than my youngest sibling, like that, it just, there was other things going on. We, we didn't have time to like have birthday breakfast and like special things. No, no negative feelings towards that at all. I'm just saying that we grew up a little bit different. So I love that my husband's family, that they're really into things. So of course she made Easter super special for us since she was here in the house. Um, we had like the most fabulous Easter baskets with lots of candy that we really enjoy. I got another coffee mug warmer, which I love so much. I got some perfume, I mean, just spoiled us rotten. Um, we had an Easter egg hunt, just me and my husband, which was kind of funny because it, we did do Easter egg hunts in my family, but because there were four of us, my mom, my mom is so organized, honestly. She's where I get the organization from. Um, she would give each of us a different color Easter egg. Like, I think I was usually purple, um, my sister was usually pink, and then my brothers, one was blue and one was yellow or one was green or whatever. And so my dad, <laughs> my dad and mom would both hide the eggs and my dad always hid them so hard. Like we would find Easter eggs in September because they would be, they would forget how many they hid and then they would be hidden in such difficult places we couldn't find them all. But basically, you know, they would have 20 eggs for each of us, 20 blue, 20 green, 20 pink, 20 purple. They would hide them throughout different rooms of the house and then we would hunt. And it was great because we didn't have to fight <laughs> over them. We knew that like if we found a different color egg, it wasn't ours. And then we could help our sibling like, hey, I saw a blue egg in the dining room and, you know, help them out. So I really liked that. But when we hunted for eggs on Sunday, just me and my husband, there was only like a set number of eggs and anyone could get any of them. And so we were competitive, we were fighting, and my husband always, he's so competitive, he always finds more. He's so good at just about anything. But it was still super fun, so I'm really grateful for my mother-in-law for making that special and making us feel treated and like kids on Easter. It made, you know, sort of a strange Easter really, really great. <clears throat> And then lastly, just bringing me joy. Um, the weather has been really great lately. It's been warm, it's been cold, it's been rainy, but honestly, like most days we've been getting an amount of, like a certain amount of sunshine and uh, Toaster and I have been taking walks every day and my husband has been joining us um, some of the time, which has just been really nice. Walks are like even more important now that we're stuck inside all day and we don't have anywhere else to go just getting to walk around the neighborhood or for us we can go outside of the neighborhood there's a walking path um, out around by a fountain and you you see other people at a distance of course 
super far away from other people. Um, but it's still nice to like get out and like wave at your neighbors, even if you don't know them and just see other people. So I really appreciate that we do live in a neighborhood and we can do that and we're not, um, I don't know, you know, if we were living in the city and there wasn't really the walkability, I'm really appreciating that. It's been become really, really important for us. Okay, I think that that is everything, you guys. Woohoo, made it through. Maybe I didn't sound too crazy, who knows? Um, but please go check out Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady if you haven't already heard of her, um, but definitely even if you have, Go check out her podcast from this week. See her answers to those five questions. Come back next week to see who else I'm going to be talking to. I am super, super excited. And if you came over from Kay's channel, welcome. I am super excited to get to know you and to see you hopefully again next week for episode 60. Um, is it episode 60? Oh my goodness. Check. Wow. Wow. 60 episodes. That's going to be exciting. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming and I will see you next time. Bye.